Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to me, your host, Christian Watson. So, my friends, I'm just going to get right into this analysis. I don't have any time for the pleasantries. You know, last night in Boulder, Colorado, so this last night is in March 22nd, 2021, a depraved poor soul marched into a supermarket and gunned down 10 people. Now, we understand what is endemic to these type of events in America. After the mourning and the praying, which should happen in almost every case, because guess what? The mourning and praying are spiritual signatures, spiritual signs that we value and we understand those human beings that were killed meant something and they had an impact on the world just by breathing, just by having their own little unique imprint, the little unique DNA present within the diaspora of humanity. They meant something. But shortly after that, you'll have people saying thoughts and prayers are not enough. We need regulation. And of course, this is what former Congresswoman Gabrielle Griffiths did. Now, for those of you who do not know, Gabrielle Griffiths was shot uh, while she was at a, a, a congressional listening meeting. And, and a few people were killed at that meeting as well. And she struggled with speaking for a very long while. She has finally gotten much better, thank God. You know, discuss if we agree or if we disagree with our political opponents. We don't want them to get hurt. We all exist in a brotherhood, my friends. But before Gabrielle Giffords even knew the information about the shooter in Boulder, before she even knew how many people were dead, before Gabrielle Giffords even knew, before Gabrielle Giffords even knew the weapon that was used by the shooter, she used this as an opportunity to push for gun control. She says in this tweet here, this is an especially personal tragedy for me. I survived a shooting at a grocery store that devastated my beloved Tucson. It's been 10 years and callous communities have faced something similar. This is not normal. Hashtag enough is enough. You go over to her website. She has a policy prescription, obviously. And the precursor to her to her statement on her press release, it's a press statement put out yesterday, says, Today, multiple people, including a law enforcement officer, were killed at a King Super's grocery store in Boulder, Colorado. Giffords, the gun violence prevention organization led by former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, continues to monitor the situation. This is the third mass shooting in less than a week, with eight people killed in the Atlanta area and one killed and five more shot in Philadelphia. Now, we should understand what happened in Atlanta, what happened in Philadelphia, and what happened in Colorado are very different. But the problem is... Gifford is trying to, and her people, and, the gun, and gun control advocates in general, are trying to reduce all these situations to a single cause simply because they have similar similarities. That is not epistemically good, meaning that is not how we actually pursue true knowledge. We pursue true knowledge, my friends, by investigating the particularities of situations so that we know how to address those situations without having the sort of one size fits all when in our reality we don't even know what the size fits because we don't even know what the situations are that's one thing that i'm seeing here that is very concerning but when officials today and this is within the past 40 minutes only in the past 40 minutes to a few hours have we actually learned more details of this shooting have we actually learned okay who's dead or have we actually learned okay what did he what weapon did he bear today it was realized that he this man amwad al awi Alisa, I'm probably mispronouncing that. He was wielding an AR-15 style pistol. So this is a semi-automatic weapon that is typically used for sport or hunting. And he bought it a week ago. And he decided to use this weapon to go ahead and come kill people. Now, many have said, well, if there had been a long waiting period, oh, well, if there, if this um, background, if this ban on assault rifles had, had, had gone through in this city, um, he probably wouldn't have been able to do this. First of all, First of all, because there was a ban on assault rifles that this city had legislated, and it was shut down by a judge. First of all, he could easily go to it. It was a city ordinance that, that, that was at the question here. This man could easily have gone to a different place to get this weapon. That's number one. Number two, it is a misnomer to call AR-15s assault rifles. That is not true. Uh-huh. And number three, you cannot stave off murderous desires with waiting periods. There is something that germinates within the seat of an individual when they have homicidal desires. It is something that is so bare and wicked. It's something that is so disgusting that cannot be easily brushed off by having more regulations. But here's the bigger issue. 
I'm seeing a similarity in how we conduct our politics and how we conduct our understanding of political knowledge between the Asian American situation that were, where they were shot up in the salons and between this situation in Boulder. Raphael Warnock, the senator of my state, the senator of Georgia, who is one of the most dishonest emissaries of the race identity politics nonsense that we're seeing manifest and take hold in America, he said, against empirical evidence, we all know hate when we see it. Warnock rejects FBI chief's view of the Atlanta shootings. For these who do not know, Chris Ray of the FBI and Joe Biden are basically saying we don't know what the motivation was. They're saying we don't know what the motivation was, or if we do, it's not racially motivated. It's probably motivated by other things. Now, Andrew Sullivan has already written a brilliant piece about the media narrative around this. Um, David French, who is another brilliant writer who I don't agree with all the time, he's written a brilliant piece about the sort of purity culture that a lot of Christians get involved in that could has been proposed as a possible cause for the destruction in Atlanta a week ago. Let me say this. I'm not going to relitigate either of those. I'm going to expose how Warnock and Giffords and people who follow under their tutelage are seeing politics by what they want to see and not by what the truth is. So my friends, if I give you a proposition of, I say, okay, my friends, X is Y. And I can demonstrate how X leads to Y. Would I, would I not be satisfying basic evidentiary and judiciary responsibility by doing that? Basic logical responsibility. Now, I'll say this. If I say, okay, well, it looks like X leads to Y, and I leave my hypothesis there, am I doing my due diligence? Warnock is saying, okay, well, it looks like X leads to Y. It looks like this is a, an instance of racism. It looks like, why is this so? Because people who killed were Asians? Well, what if the people who were killed were, were white people? Would it look like racism then? Here's the problem. And, and, and this is exactly what Giffords did as well. Giffords came over and she said, okay, well, it appears as if this is a part of the, this is a part of the bigger issue in America with gun culture. The problem is, my friends, we don't see politics. We don't see events for what they are when we operate in the political sphere. We see events through our ideological visors, and we use those events to inform our worldviews. Or at least this is what Giffords is doing. This is what Warnock is doing. This is the problem on both the left and the right. We are not seeing things as they are in reality, as bare facts of reality. We are seeing things as we can filter them and, and, and convert them into something radically different from their true form. The true form of what this man did in Colorado is that some man who appears to have, according to the evidence, mental issues. His family said that they, they had, this guy was talking about hearing voices and everything. A man who appears to have severe mental issues obtained a weapon, went through all legal processes, and did something bad. Giffords thinks and her sort of status mentality of government, that the government could have stopped that, it could not have. Warnock says, okay, I don't care what the evidence says, this is a hate crime. Why? Because the people in this incident were Asians, which implicitly suggests that certain crimes perpetuated against certain people should be taken in a different epistemic understanding than crimes perpetuated against individuals in general. Do you see the problem here, people? The problem is that we are ignoring reality for narrative. The problem is that we don't necessarily care, or at least Warnock and Giffords don't really care about the true causes of all this stuff. The problem is that they are taking two very complex situations and reducing them to the barest bones possible understandings of reality. For Giffords, the understanding of reality that she's going through is this sort of ubiquitous problem in her understanding of gun, of gun violence in America. And for Warnock, is this sort of ubiquitous violence of white supremacy. They both have these two narratives going up in space, germinating around their heads, spinning around their heads, creating sentiments for them. We have to be careful, people. Because it seems to me, if we look at the evidence, that it is not what Warnock and it is not what Giffords are suggesting. And oftentimes, this kind of tribalistic thinking will bleed into our estimation of certain figures. You know, as someone who is not necessarily a fan of every Republican politician, but I am working in the conservative media space, I have gotten, I have gotten attacked and assailed several times for saying, yeah, Josh Hawley's not my thing. Yeah, Tom Conn's not my thing. 
How could you do that? How dare you? Oh, I'm looking at their actions as objects of reality, not their actions as, as tools for me to use to progress my own agenda. Reason is taking a back seat to sensitivities in this paradigm. Reason is taking a back seat to what we want to believe. We're not willing to swallow the bitter pill of understanding that sometimes our paradigms can't explain everything. Sometimes our paradigms are limited by certain facts. And sometimes we should, we should look at the facts first, then see how the facts line up with our paradigm, not the other way around. It's very concerning, my friends. The blood is still wet. The blood was still wet on the grounds of that supermarket before Gabrielle Giffords began to push her gun narrative, her anti-gun narrative. Emotions are still raw in the minds of so many Asian American human beings, individuals in the Atlanta area and abroad. And Raphael Warnock is trying to stoke that by pretending against all evidence, against all inference, against all deduction, that this was indisputably a hate crime. This is not how you reason your way out of events. This is not how you embrace epistemic humility. This is not how you obtain the truth. What this is, is how you create falsehoods and then how you interact with falsehoods. If you create falsehoods and interact with falsehoods, I mean, Plato had a very, Plato believed this was the cave. Plato believed that we were all, we are, most of us are separated from true knowledge and that those of us who are incumbent, who are endemic to true knowledge, well, we, we just get the bad end of the stick. Maybe it's not as simple as that, but I see a lot of reflections of the cave in this particular instance here in our culture. So my friends, as these events continue to develop, as we learn more about the Asian shooter, as we, know, as we learn more about the um, Boulder shooter, Mr. Awi, whatever the hell his name is, understand one thing. Reason reigns supreme. Reason is the metric by which we understand and embrace the world. Do not allow your preconceptions to get in the way of reason. Do not allow your political desires to get in the way of reason. And don't allow this sort of leftist agenda of trying to paint the world through a single idea, through a single quality, mess up your understanding of the world. Because if you understand the world as a rich tapestry of, a, of many events that happen and occur, and may occur separately, and may not be put, looking to some sort of broader instance, then you will have a rich understanding of the world. If you, on the other hand, believe the world is this continuous, continuous material system of violence, whether that violence emerges from gun sales, whether that violence emerges from hate, then you will always have a very lethargic view of the world and you will never be able to interact with the truth of reality. And without that ability, my friends, I think you're lost. I'm afraid you're lost. So think on it. And as always, my friends, I love you. And please support me on Patreon if you'd like to. Patreon.com slash official C. Watson. But as always, my friends, I love you. And please stay pensive. Bye-bye.